Welcome to this week's episode of our show where we decide, does it hold up? Is this comedy still funny? Does it still matter? And this week we're doing one from about a little over 20 years ago, which is a very, uh, has a cult following, and that is Office Space. From Mike Judge, creator of Beavis and Butthead and co-creator of King of the Hill, comes a movie about people who go to work. 1999 film about working in an office, basically. And it, at the time, didn't do well in the box office. It took a little bit for it to get the acclaim that it, and the cult following that it, it, it garnered. Um, but it has been well liked by a lot of people because it really mimics office life in a lot of ways. I mean, you could thank Comedy Central for that yes. because uh, uh, in the early 2000s, Comedy Central uh, is not in the form that it's in now, in case you don't know. Um, and they would just play movies on repeat. And this was one of those ones that would just be shown all the time. Um, I'd say ran into the ground, but that's that means that like you're sick of the movie. And this is kind of one of those movies that I think you could turn on and enjoy and watch um, for a lot of different reasons. And I think the big thing is, is that um, everybody has some sort of experience in an office, generally speaking. And so even if it's not like in an office setting, if somebody has experience in the restaurant world um, and they like see themselves in that whole tchotchkes, <laughs> they see themselves there. And so everybody can get something out of this movie and see themselves in this movie. Uh, and I think that that gives you a great opportunity to just sit back and watch it. Absolutely, because everyone can can deal with a, a boss that they didn't like. Even if you didn't work in an office and you had a boss and a job growing up in high school or something that you didn't like, you have that. There are different dynamics in the office itself where um, Ron Livingston's character, Peter, is like the straight man. Like, he's just an everyman. Um, you have the Michael Bolton character who's kind of a dork. Michael Bolton? That's me. So are you related to that singer guy? No, it's just a coincidence. Oh. We have um, a character in the office who's kind of like the cool guy who who you know talk about partying and stuff. Things go well. I might be showing her my O face. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You know what I'm talking about. Oh. <laughs> you just have all the different dynamics of the office. You have the consultants come in. Bob is a consultant. Yeah. People don't like consultants. It's kind of like a running joke. And they're both named Bob, which is hilarious. The Bobs. Oh, hi, Bob. Bob. Um, they just, it's very simple. And Mike Judge did a really good job of playing up stereotypes perfectly of an office. Not overdoing anything, but just making everything relatable. And I think that's why this movie has done so well. And Comedy Central airing it over and over and over again really put it in front of more people than it did in theaters. And that's why it built this cult following. Because... Even now in 2020, there's so much that you can relate to. Um, obviously, like what's funny about this is they took the most mundane thing for the office to do, where Peter is changing software for the 2000s. Uh, to save space, they used two digits for the date instead of four, so like 98 instead of 1998. Uh, so I go through these thousands of lines of code, and uh, it doesn't really matter. I uh, I don't like my job, and uh, I don't think I'm gonna go anymore. Which is hilarious if you lived through that time, just because like everyone's freaking out about Y two K. But it's a really mundane, boring thing, and you can relate to that by a mundane, boring job that you might have now, working in computer software or sales, whatever. Um, it just there's so much in this movie that is relatable. Amazingly, twenty years later. Well, one of the great things is uh, Mike Judge has said that he was trying to fill this role uh, that Ron Livingston ended up in, and all of these actors came in and we're playing it up as like, ah, oh, I hate work. Oh, I, you know, oh, am I right? Office, it's the worst, right? But that's not what he was going for. He wrote this, this movie based on his experience in an office and what it was like and how awful it was. And so when Ron Livingston went in, he immediately got the job because he was playing it as this, like, he's beaten down. Like, there is such a thing in office life as a beaten dog. One of these days, it's just going to be like... <laughs> so can I get you gentlemen something more to drink or maybe something to nibble on some pizza shooters shrimp poppers or extreme fajitas just coffee okay sounds like a case of the Mondays <laughs> like if I'm sure if you look around your office there is at least one person that is that beaten dog that yeah. you're like yeah. they've just seen so much they've done so much and at this point they just 
they have no fight left in them. Yeah. Like even if you hated your boss and wanted to say, no, I'm not coming in on Saturday. Like you just can't right. because you just, I'm, I'm resigned to the fact that I'm going to be coming into work on yeah. Saturday. Um, and he, even he says as much, uh, to his neighbor, uh, where he's like, I just know Lumberg's going to call me and I'm going to go in <laughs> and like, he just knows, he knows he's doomed to yeah. this terrible job the, and terrible the life. Best, the best line he has is talking to the hypnotherapist and saying that every day is the worst. I, I'm going to, I'm butchering it now, but every day is the worst day of his life. And the hypnotherapist says, what about today? Is today the worst day of your life? And he's yeah, today's worst day of Is today the worst day of your life? Yeah. Wow, that's messed up. I admit something that people who are beaten down in their jobs, who hate their job, not because necessarily like they're abused or like they're just like not in the right field, just like the mundane nature of their office and their industry is bringing them down. They understand that feeling of every day is the worst day of my life. It's not probably true, but you just feel that way. Like every day is so mundane and it's so easy to relate to. And you brought like Mike Judge writing this based off the experience of working in an office. I think something that's cool about him and how he was able to make this so relatable is that early on in his professional life, he worked in offices. He wasn't in Hollywood. He wasn't a, a famous writer. He had real life, normal experiences that the rest of us have. And you can really see that translated into this movie. Yeah. And, and, and it's great to see the kind of juxtaposition uh, between Ron Livingston's character and Milton. <laughs> You've got Ron Livingston's character who's beaten down and he's just, he's got nothing left in his life. And then you got Milton's character who is just used and abused. If you could go ahead and get it as far back against that wall as possible, that would be great. No. You really great if you could just sort of take care of the cockroach problem we've been having in here. No. And there's always some like and he's threatening to burn down the office. I set the building on fire. Move my desk, you know, you took my stapler. Go ahead and get that from you. Yeah. Mm. There's somebody in the office who's just like that too, yeah. right? And you actually sometimes have to worry about it because if you get somebody who's at that point, yeah, they could burn down that office. Yeah, and there's always somebody who's like a little squirrely and a little quirky too, like Milton, who may be weird, but he's he's harmless. Well, I mean, he burns down. Spoiler alert, he burns down the office. <laughs> You don't you don't like want to be rude to him uh, because he's like a nice guy. He's not doing anything wrong to you. But like the weird guy in the office, that's just like another character that he invented that he really nailed. And there's really no like there's kind of multiple plots within this where the beginning is really just about Peter hating his job and then the hypnosis. And then he goes into this thing um, where he doesn't care anymore. And like, I think another reason people love this movie and can relate to it is it's a dream to just go into your office in casual clothes and just not give a fuck. Yeah. And like knock down your cubicle wall, scale a fish at your, like everything he's doing is like the, the level of not giving fuck a fuck is admirable. I think people really like that too. But that takes a shift in the latter third of the movie where the plot is stealing money from the company. So I think part of the reason maybe it didn't take off too is like there really wasn't no, there was, there's no like central plot like a rising and falling action that you follow from start to finish there's like kind of stories within this story um but because of the relatedness and because of just like the timeless comedy i, I think who cares like there's there's kind of like tv shows within this movie but it's just it's enjoyable yeah absolutely and i think that i mean this movie like so many of the ones that we've watched to this point um, has so many quotable lines from it. Um, you know, you think about um, uh, how they're how both uh, Ron Livingston's character um, and his neighbor are on the other sides of the wall from each other, and they're talking to each other through the wall. Hey, Peter, man, check out Channel Nine. Check out this chick. Damn it! He's telling him to turn on the TV. Like There's breast a breast exam, exam. <laughs> uh, or uh, they're having the conversation. What would you do if you won the lottery? Tell you what I'd do, man. Two chicks at the same time, man. That's it. Chicks Two chicks at the same, same time. time. Like little things like that, or like the flare. You know who else had the flare? It was the, the Nazis. Nazis. Yeah. You know the Nazis had pieces of flare, but they made the Jews wear. Yeah, you know, like all of these little lines. Um, so many quotable things that um, they're so simple too. Yeah, and and, and enjoyable, yeah. and just like it, it, they have no bearing necessarily on the movie, but very enjoyable and yeah. just kind of. Um, something that you can get behind over and over again. Um, 
I do want to say that Mike Judge has done such a good job in his career um, with just like getting the nitty gritty of of what every everyday life is like, and also just kind of and also kind of predicting the future, like with Idiocracy. He predicted kind of what's going on mm -hmm. now to the point where I'll say that when I go to Costco, they've got the self checkout lines, and the self checkout kind of talks to you like when you're when you're doing uh, when you're like going through the process, and then when you finally get everything, and it reminds you to get your receipt so they can check it on the way out. It says, "Thank you for shopping at Costco." Welcome to Costco. I love you. Every single time I say, like, if Anne's next to me or if it's just me myself, I say, I love you. <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and I'm sure people think I'm crazy for that, but like things like yeah. that, like the little lines and the little like things of like, every day, he's done such a great job yeah. of, of grasping. And this is another great example of that. Um, yeah. He's done that with like idiocracy is definitely one um, king of the hill. Like, it's everyday life that he modeled after living in Texas. Uh, Beavis and Butthead is just like, you can really understand just two like fuck up teenagers. Like it's easy to understand. Um, and this is why this movie Office Space is so successful because you understand it. And that's why it's so timeless too. And I think the only thing that threatens that timeless nature of it, because right now I would say just off the top of my head, it might be one of the most timeless comedies of all time. Like it, it applies to every generation of anyone that's worked in an office. But if after the pandemic, if office culture is just kind of like over and we're, ha we're having more remote work, I mean, it's going to take like a generation for this movie to lose that part of it. But I wonder if like, that's the only thing that threatens it is if like 40 years from now, people don't know what it's like to work in an office. Yeah. Like, I, that's the only thing, because this I is mean, such a relatable thing. Yeah, the, the, the actually physically being in the office is, is something that could be lost in translation if after the pandemic we kind of move to this virtual life. Um, but I think even still there, like, the relationships of, of, like, a boss and his underlings and, like, asking you to work and, like, Hey, can you get that done? Well, it's Friday night. Like, do you really expect me to do this on Friday night? Yeah, I expect you to do it on Friday night. Like one of those types of things. I think it still can hold up. Not as well. Yeah. Um, not like right now where you ask anybody about office space and they're like, yeah, I, that's my life. Um, and even still, I think the pandemic, I don't think can, can totally no, threaten no, that because I think not. office life in some respect will never go away. Yeah. Um, but you're right. But I think the, 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 the big underlying thing is about bosses and the, like, I have four bosses that I have to report to. Um, even if you're reporting to your four bosses on Zoom, you're still reporting to your four bosses. Like, right. it doesn't matter if you're in an office or on the computer. Yeah. So um, I think it still even is, I think it still remains timeless there. Uh, the only thing that kind of comes into it... Um, which, uh, for me, I think is where they're going to take a look at um, the um, the the way that they treat Samir. I think is probably the only thing that is like, kind like of mispronouncing his last name. Yeah, like, like not a not going to work here anymore. Yeah, not right? gonna, not gonna, not going to work here anymore. Not going to work here anymore anyway. <laughs> that's I wrote that down. Like that's exactly uh, yeah. you know like that's the only thing that I could think of that threatens this movie yeah. is because he's an individual. And as far as I can tell, he's the only person of color in this movie for the, of major, of the major characters yeah, for yeah. sure. But like, you know, like he's the only person of color in this movie and he's kind of treated poorly. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I've, I've read interviews where they said um, that people have said to him, even though he, he's, he is American and he's got a, like a regular, voice like no accent like the rest like you mm -hmm. and i um he put on an accent for this movie and people from the middle east have said you did such a good job you sound like my uncle that's amazing so like he gets way good credit for that of course he's typecast in this role probably because they needed to have somebody who does the engineering side of it and they wanted it to be somebody who is um 
you know, of a kind of Middle Eastern Indian kind of, cause you don't, he's kind of androgynous in that sense that you yeah. don't like, you can't put your finger on it and say he is from this culture. Right. Um, and so because of that, because he's playing kind of everything there, it's a little bit dangerous in terms of, you know, like where we are in the world right now yeah. today. But even then, like, it, it's not like his character is not about that. His character is not about tokenism. Um, even if there are some jokes made at his expense. Yeah. Um, his character is about being treated like garbage. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and PC load letter. What right. does that mean? And, you know, and, like and you, you like him because it's like, it's decided very early that he has like a really strong work ethic when he's, um, given the question like what would you do with a million dollars he said i'd take half of it and put it in securities and then take half of it and bring it to my brother and it's just like i would invest half of it in loris mutual funds and then take the other half over to my friend asadullah who works in uh, securities samir like that's not the actual you're taking it to literally um he's a very likable character so even with that it's like we still root for him kind of thing like, yeah. even if, if we're making fun of him and at his expense then he's getting beaten down i think like he's very likable and like the fact that so they don't point out like where he's from or what his nationality is or anything but the lack of specificity and the simplicity of everything that goes on in this movie, I think, is really impressive in that it's never said what city the movie takes place in. Now, it, it's shot in Texas. Yeah, and, and Mike Judge has said as much, said that this is meant to be yes. based in Texas, but, but it could be anywhere. anywhere. Yeah, but in the movie itself, it's never addressed. And we talked before with other movies like trading places being in philadelphia like we know it's in philadelphia but we also don't know why so it's like a takeaway we had is like why is the setting here you don't even really think about the setting of it being in the dallas fort worth area i think is what he's best where it was shot and it doesn't matter because it's relatable it can be dallas it can be the chicago suburbs it can be wisconsin it can be anywhere and i think this is a really strong thing and i just he nailed it yeah yeah I, I mean i think again going back to all of this it's got the jokes it's got the relatability um and i i mean honestly i i don't think that there's any other way that this movie gets threatened like in terms of does it hold up other than the one small element of of how they actually treat samir um and so i think because of that i mean i think it holds up i think it holds up extraordinarily well yeah. probably better than any of the movies that we've done so far and probably better than any of the movies that we even will do. Yeah, I think this is one of the most timeless movies, timeless comedies out there. I think it easily holds up. Yeah. Well, you heard it. We think it holds up. <laughs>